We're currently hiking toward a keystone species, a tree that lives in rocky, wet terrain with shallow roots, and it's dying. But that's not why I care about this tree. At least that's not originally why I cared about it. See, when I started making this video, I didn't realize that this tree regulates the temperature of the water, making it great for the fish and animals that live near it, that it holds nitrate and nutrients in the soil to make sure that it's filtering and allowing for pure water to flow downstream. But I didn't know any of that when I cared about this tree originally and wanted to make this video. You see, when I was growing up, I knew that this tree could make me spit green. I knew that it would hold its branches at the bottom even after it died, so the rain would flow over the needles. And when it finally got down to the, uh, to the lower levels, that the rain would be washed away from the tree trunk and that you could find dry wood to light a fire. I knew that it was a source of vitamin C and that there were tannins and you can make tea from this tree. But I didn't realize how important it truly was. So we're hiking to this tree because it's becoming harder and harder to find out in the wilderness. We're hiking to it because I care about what happens to this tree and you should too. Today this tree is known as the redwood of the east. Left alone it can grow up to 150 feet tall, towering massive groves. However, the Europeans found it a nuisance. They thought that it grew in inhospitable places and they didn't actually like the fact that it was just all over the place. They saw it as a weed and so they named it after a weed that they had a negative association with. They named it after the hemlock tree, which is a giant flowering weed that's extremely poisonous. And this is what they used to kill Socrates. And Excuse me a moment, watching my step. And they actually used to refer to it as the hemlock, which then became known as the Eastern hemlock. But you see, they didn't treat it very well and they ripped down forests, just ripping off the bark to use for tanning. And they basically took down huge forests of it. And so the Eastern hemlock got known to have a bad reputation. It wasn't until later we realized how important it was. And that's when the woolly adulgids came. The woolly adulgid is a small beetle insect that grows near these trees, or on these trees actually. They hook onto the area between all of the needles where they meet the stem and they create these like little, little white looking specks. And that's the wax over the top of the beetle as they suck the needles dry and kill the needles and eventually the tree. And today, we barely have any of them left. That's why I had to scout this spot to find a group of Eastern hemlocks that we could show, that we could point out the importance of how wonderful of a tree this is. Because even though I care a great deal about all the things I just mentioned, I really care about this tree for nostalgia. I want my kids to be able to spit green and I want them to be able to light fires using the dead sticks and I want them to have the opportunity to make tea and sit underneath one of these trees. So if you find an eastern hemlock or if you're lucky enough to find a grove of them in the woods or if you're going to write in the comments how they're everywhere where you are. I tell you, take a moment, appreciate these, sit down in a grove of eastern hemlocks and just enjoy a moment because we don't know whether or not these trees are going to be around much longer. And if you're wondering how to identify them, because I think that's sort of an important thing. If you look for a pine tree that just has one needle coming out of either side of its tiny little branches, and then on either side of the stem of that needle, there is a white line, then you will have found what you're looking for. So what I will say is that if you have the opportunity to go sit under one of these trees and drink some hemlock tea or make your spit green or just appreciate what it does for the nature around you. Take advantage of it. Get outside, generate the wild within.
I'm Scott Peasley, and this is Wild Generation.